This is Rachel Tessman from StampYourArtOut.com. In my classes, I'm often asked how I tie my ribbon on my cards and projects so neatly. I'm sure there's lots of videos out there circulating the internet, but I promised my stampers that I would record my own and post it to my blog. In this video, I'm going to be showing you the simple knot with various ribbons. I'm also going to show you a bow, and I'm going to show you a couple faux knots. So let's get started. This card here, a quick easy baby card that I made for my sister-in-law who will be having her baby soon. Uses a very thin ribbon. This is the seam binding ribbon. We're going to have her shower in just a month from now. So what I do is I measure my ribbon by just wrapping it around my card and making sure I have enough to hold on to. Then, here we go. <laughs> So I'm right-handed and typically this works this way for me. Now if you are left-handed or you do your ribbons opposite, you can always just reverse my directions. Um, I hope that works. Let's see. So I'm going to go right over left. So my right ribbon, my ribbon that's coming from the right-hand side is going to go over the left and I'm going to make them arch upward. Notice I don't have any kinks or twists in my ribbon. It's completely flat. I'm going to keep that flat and I'm just going to bend the ribbon in half. So I'm going to take that top one, which was coming from the right, it's now my top ribbon, and I'm going to bend it in half so it comes straight down. The other ribbon that was coming from the left is going to bend in half the opposite way and go straight up, and I'm going to cinch. Okay, now you can see I've got the ribbon that I'm pulling on, the ends of the ribbon are perpendicular from where the ribbons first started, kind of making an X. Now I use my ring finger to hold down the center. You could grab a friend or if, if that doesn't work for you, you can just practice using one of your fingers on your hands. Now, what I've got here is a top ribbon and a bottom ribbon, but I'm gonna angle this slightly so that it looks like there's a left ribbon and a right ribbon. So now I'm gonna go left over right. Do you see that? left ribbon, the one that was coming from my left side, is now going over the one that was coming from the right side. And I'm going to take that left one, which is now my top, and I'm going to bend it in half again and tuck it under and through the hole. So there's only a bend, not a twist. This one's going to stay flat. And as I pull, I'm going to try to keep this nice smooth ribbon on top. Now with thinner ribbon like the seam binding, it doesn't really matter too much. If you're worried about that, this is a good ribbon to practice with, the seam binding. And now you can see I've got the two ends of the ribbon going out to the side like I intended and I can just snip it and I have my completed card. Let's try that with another kind of ribbon. This ribbon's a little bit thicker. This is uh, our white organza ribbon and this was done on one of my fun graduation cards that I made recently on my blog. So let's go ahead and take this red, white, and blue card and grab some ribbon again. So I wrap it around so there's no twists. I check to make sure I have enough to hold on to and cut. So I just estimate. There's no real exact amount because it really depends on the size of your hand. Let's try that again. Or the the workmanship of your fingers. <laughs> so let's take the right over the left, fold it, bring it straight down, fold this one the opposite way, and bring it straight up and cinch. Now you can see that because this ribbon is a little thicker, it takes a little bit more to work it so it looks like it's nice and flat there. Okay. Now I'm going to angle it this way, and this is now going to become my left ribbon, and this one's going to become my right and I'm going to wrap the left over the right, fold that one that's on top in half, pull it through, keep that bubble on top, and cinch. Just like that. Alright, let's try with one more type of ribbon. Let's try that with our satin stitched ribbon. Now this time I'm just going to show you a knot. So what I do, if I'm just going to make a knot freehand and attach it to my card, I'm going to go ahead and just take one end over the other, bend it in half, bring it through that hole, keep that part bent but this one straight, 
and as I pull it you can see that there's that nice little bubble in the middle just like that. And then you can trim this you can take a glue dot on the back side and pin it to your card. Let's try that again. Let's try it with a thicker ribbon. Okay, so right over left, bend only the top ribbon, bring it down and through, keep this ribbon nice and straight, and as you pull, you just keep that bubble in there. Notice I'm, I'm keeping my fingers under here, and that helps to create kind of a little poof on each side so that it looks like this ribbon is nice and airy. Okay. All right, now here's a trickier ribbon. This ribbon is our natural ribbon, it has a chevron design. It has a print on one side but not a print on the other. So let's give this a try. Right over left, you know what, I'm going to trim this in half here, trim that off. Okay, right over left. I'm going to tuck it, but now instead of pulling straight down, because you'll notice what will happen if I pull straight down, I'll have the chevron pattern showing on this side, but not on this side. So as I bring it through and start to tighten, this is going to turn and twist. I still have that bubble on top, but now I've tricked the ribbon and I've got the design still showing on each side. Let's do that with a card. Okay. Here's that knot one more time. Right over left, tuck it down, bring it through, twist this one, remember, because this is the base of the, the knot. We haven't yet quite done the knot yet. So this one has to twist and go the opposite way. Cinch it so you're going up and down. Now turn your card slightly to the left and you can see that the top ribbon becomes the left ribbon and this ribbon becomes the right. Take left over right, bend that, bring it through, keep this one straight, no bends, pull it and you've got your bubble. Now I'm going to remove this because we're going to make a bow on this card. So now we need a little bit more ribbon. Let's go ahead and tie a bow on this instead. So right over left, bend, pull it through, bend, pull it up. Okay? I think we're getting it now. Now hold it down. Now the bottom one I'm going to loop. Notice I'm not twisting it, I'm just looping it. I'm bringing it together into a, what I call a rabbit's ear. Then this top ribbon is going to wrap to the left around and I'm not twisting it. I'm keeping this part going around the ribbon. Okay, now I've got it coming around. Now what I want to do is I want to bend this ribbon here into another rabbit's ear, but I'm going to do it as I tuck it through. Okay? So I'm tucking that through it's becoming a rabbit's ear over here and it has no twists in it. It's nice and flat. It's hard for me to do this slow. <laughs> Let's try that again. Bringing it through. Okay, here it comes. I'm going to let go and cinch. And there's where you get your bow. Okay? Alright. That was easy, right? Okay. Let's show a couple other ideas. On a scrapbook page, it's harder to um, use a ton of ribbon. It's hard to justify using all that ribbon. So instead what I like to do if I'm going to do a knot on my page is I like to do the length of the ribbon along the side and attach it. So as you can see I worked on that off screen here. I just attached it to the back. I'm not using a ton of ribbon, just one full length. And then I'm going to take and cut a snip it off tuck that underneath a loose section of my ribbon and again just doing an overhand knot. So right over left, bend it, bring it down and through, keep this one straight. Okay. 
and there's my knot. And I'm going to show you a faux knot. That's actually one of the faux knots. Faux means fake. Okay, <laughs> so here's another fake knot or faux one. Um, what I did is I just took our really, really wide ribbon. This is our wide grosgrain striped ribbon and you just pinch it and you attach a brad around it. Okay, so let's do that real quick. So you just take a length of it, you gather it up. A wise thing to do first though is take open the prongs of this. There we go. Just cinch it. Wrap your brad around and you want to have a brad that has pretty long legs on it so it can wrap all the way around your ribbon. Sometimes you have to work with it as you do with all kinds of bows. But there's a faux knot. I've also done faux bows using the same type of technique. And what you do is you take and make a loop. This takes a little bit more manipulation. I'm going to open up one of these brads again, get it ready. Okay. So you've got your loop. You're going to cinch the whole center. Do you see how that loop is? It's just, just a loop where one ribbon is over the other in the back. And then you take and you cinch it shut like this. And you wrap your brad around. The brad prongs. Legs, I like to call them too. Of course, I probably take a little bit more time and work with that, but you get the idea. And, and there you can see all of our faux bows and faux knots. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you got some good tips out of it. And I'd like you all to go and stamp your art out. Bye-bye. Thanks.